Hey beer geeks and welcome back to the Craft Beer Channel. Uh, today we are doing what Brad just called, what was it, proper countryman stuff. Proper countryman pursuit. Yeah. Look, look at this. We're on a landy. We're in a, <laughs> a field landy. in the middle of England somewhere. We are. We're in, we're in Suffolk visiting one of the most exciting small breweries in the UK uh, and that's Little Earth Project. Uh, pretty like lots of organic beer, lots of really wild or as they call it untamed beer yes. uh, and a really wonderful story that actually starts in a cidery. Suffolk's Little Earth Project is not easy to get to, but it's more than worth the drive. Found in a barn behind the charming Whitehorse pub, it makes beer unlike anyone else thanks to a love of organic ingredients, historic beer recipes and a house yeast that comes from the family cider press. We featured them in our brewery to look out for in 2017, but only made it up to meet founder Tom and his partner Danny this summer. What we found was a truly local brewery dedicated to using its gorgeous surroundings to make unique and sometimes challenging beer. We start though with their house style, a mixed firm saison and a chat with Tom. So what are we drinking here? Uh, it's lemon and rosemary saison. Right, local of, well probably not local lemon. Not local lemons, <laughs> no. Um, but local rosemary. Yeah. Just from next door's garden. Just um, over there. Just over there. Right. Yep. And saisons, I guess make up quite a bulk of your, I mean, if you can call it Saison, it's kind of your house beer really is perhaps a better word for it. Um, yeah, we, for those style beers, we actually use a mixture of our own house culture and uh, Saison yeast. Oh, okay. Um, it tends to kind of speed things up a bit and the beers tend to be a bit cleaner as well. Mm -hmm. um, and possibly less sour because that fermentation happens a little bit, a little bit quicker. So they're beers that we turn over relatively quickly compared to, to yeah. some of our other beers so um this was actually prob this was brewed this year just about right <laughs> so, so relatively quick for january us january funk you brewed yeah. this um i mean it, it's delicious like really complex lots of candied lemon soft like aromatic rosemary and then classic kind of saison quality and, and quite low carbonation as well like just sort of the tickle a real ale tickle maybe yeah just a little tickle i think with the with the kind of beers that we make um they tend to be kind of quite sharp a little bit cider like because of the yeah the, the yeast involved um i think that kind of plays into the the beer tasting good with slightly lower carbonation yeah. than, than you'd expect sort of a real cider kind of edge to yeah. it as well Bo yeah. box cider yeah yeah um so obviously you started off by doing not tra entirely traditional car scale but car scale nonetheless yeah what made you decide to make the switch into making these much more complex kind of beers um well we had a uh had a history making the cider and we kind of had i like sour beers myself so yeah <laughs> okay so um, it's kind of literally yeah literally um, taste I think being brought up drinking that kind of quite sharp cider, you kind mm. of get used to those kind of flavours. And we thought, well, we can produce interesting cider using wild yeast. We like mixed fermentation beer. Well, why not? Why not try it with the try yeah. it with the try it with the beer? So, so that little cider place uh, at your parents' house is is sort of the origin of the beers and the origin of the idea of what you yeah. were going to do yeah. do as well. Yeah. Um, so you've also started doing, as well as these saisons, which are probably less classic, um, you've got your stock ale, so that's an old school English yep. style that I'm not aware of really anyone else in the UK <laughs> making those kinds of no, beers. No, no. And certainly not no. in the way that you've decided to make them. Um, no, so one of the ideas that we had when we first started the brewery was to, to look back into history. So before about 100 years ago, all beers were effectively mixed fermentation. You couldn't yeah. go to a yeast lab and we probably pick didn't know what yeast a... was no, until yeah, the mid 1800s. So. No, no. Yeah. Um, so yeah, until kind of big breweries like Carlsberg and Guinness kind of invested money into um, labs where they kind of discovered what was actually going on with their with their beer and their fermentation. It was kind of seen more as kind of a magical process than, mm. than something that involved. Uh, uh, living, living things. Um, 
so we kind of look back to that past time and think, well, you know, people were drinking this beer, it must have tasted good, they must have been doing things right for, to make that style of beer. So we kind of look back and think, how did they make this? What did they do that was kind of different to how beer's made now? And can we reproduce that in some way? And you've taken that to a more logical extreme by sort of almost being a true farmhouse brewery by using stuff that's grown by you or foraged by you the yeast is yours so it's that sort of true farmhouse brewing that used to be the case where you'd use what was around you yeah so again yeah going back that you wouldn't hundreds of years ago you wouldn't have been able to import hops from the other side yeah, of the your world. west coast hops and, no yeah. <laughs> um so you, you would have kind of been almost stuck with what you've got around you um and I think lots of people would see that as a disadvantage or a limitation, but we kind of try and use that as something to aim for. And also you can kind of make your beer different in other ways. So um, you can use aging to produce different flavors, use that wild yeast to produce interesting flavors. Okay, well, um, let's start by going off to, to that cider place where everything sort of started, I guess. Tom's dad's cider is found next to their family home, and the orchard that supplies the apples is there too. It's not far from the brewery, but there's no such thing as a quick drive in this part of the world, thanks to the roads and what you have to share them with. So we're going to start in the orchard? Yep. So this is your family home, and you said it's how old? It's probably about maybe 600 years old. Jesus. So it's quite old. That's quite, uh, yeah. <laughs> I put that in the quite category, yeah. Yeah. But so the, the main reason we're here is that these apples are the origin of your house yeah. yeast. Yeah. So was, was, was that just an idea where you're like, well, it'd be nice to have a house culture. I wonder what's on these apples kind of thing. Yeah, it's kind of, and kind of both things happened at the same time. So we were looking at starting Little Earth Project and we'd obviously been making this cider for quite a long time before that. And um, we knew that the cider tasted good and uh, um, was just naturally fermented. So we do nothing but just press the apples. Yeah, and, so you knew um, there was some we knew that viable, there was some, tasty yeast. Yeah, viable, tasty yeast. And then we, we thought, well, you know, it, does, it doesn't always come out great and sometimes it comes out better than others so we thought well if we choose the batches where the uh, cider tastes really good mm -hmm. um, which is actually one of the things we did yesterday so one of the barrels in the brewery yesterday um, in the main brew room um, you might remember it's one stacked on top of two kind of by the yeah, sink yeah. that was filled up yesterday with some work um, and yeah it was a freshly emptied cider barrel so it was just we emptied it on uh, Sunday, I think, and then and just filled it up. up again. So you're not even Tuesday. pitching anything. You're just not even pitching. Relying on what's in the barrel. Relying on what's in the barrel. Um, is that every single batch you do? You do that, or you must um, be pitching into? We 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 actually have a we have a couple of barrels in the brewery where we add fresh work all the time. So we kind of have a have a have a almost a solera that we don't sell. We use as a kind of a. A yeast a propagation culture. kind of a right, yeah. Uh, barrels. So should we go and have a look at the yeah. the cider shed? Yeah, so this is actually a, a walnut tree ah. that was planted when my parents first came here. And uh, one day we'll use some uh, some green walnuts. Green walnuts in there. You've the got to be careful with that stuff. I interviewed a beer cell about theirs, and they were like the first batch they made burnt. Oh yeah, the whole way through. Mm because um, it's that bitter and strong. Yeah. So good luck with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's about the size I imagine. Yeah, not very big. But it's, yeah, it's kind of a bit of a hobby really. So um, here we do probably about a thousand litres every year. Fill up these barrels, let it go. Um, and you're making sort of one one recipe, but I guess it depends on what apples you get. Yeah, it's it's pretty much one recipe. So it's yeah, East Anglian cider, which is a um, a blend of cooking and eating apples rather than um, 
rather than cider making apples yeah you don't they don't tend to grow very well in east anglia or naturally they weren't grown here so the apples that they grew here um tended to be eating varieties so the cider they made here was a bit of a blend of the two two types of apples so it's yeah it's about 30 percent cooking apples so even before the the cider is fermented so even when it's just apple juice it, there's a slight acidity to it just because of the kind of 30 to 40 percent uh cooking yeah. apples yeah yeah and this is the press this is the press yep yeah. <laughs> as you can see yeah it's uh um Seen, it's a kind seen, of seen some harvest, seen, seen some seasons. Yeah, this is a, I can't remember when we got this, the late 90s, I think. So it's, yeah, it's kind of a very traditional way of making it. So we build, use these slats and build a, what they call a cheese on it, using a cloths and just put it in there, press it and uh, put it straight into barrel. So it literally goes from there into a barrel and mm. left. And then into one of these. And then yeah, into one of them. That's kind of we we'll go into the pub like that. Um, sometimes we put it into that before we we bottle it. We started bottling a little bit, um, mm -hmm. but only only a handful. Yeah, so it's uh, it's quite a warm summer last year. So the cider's eight percent this year instead of the <laughs> seven point oh, right. two or something that it normally is. So it almost got more more characteristics of a, of a white wine than I was gonna uh, say it's got it's all it's also got that really oaky almost tequila-esque thing mm. and you get some interesting stuff from the from the yeast there as well so I've tasted kind of banana -y flavors in it before and all sorts but that's oh. kind of a relatively clean tasting one at the moment yeah, a bit of dry spicy oaky mm. and it's probably fairly strong um, from such humble, unique beginnings, there was only one way the brewery could really go, to embrace local ingredients and produce classic farmhouse and British styles. Even the brew house has a self-made local feel to it. So yeah, yeah you, this was built on a shoestring, evidently. Yeah, it was on a, on, yeah, on a shoestring about, um, about 10 or 15 years ago. Um, we had kind of another brewery operating here, which was uh, called Mill Green, which was mainly doing fairly basic cask beer. Um, and we just changed what we were doing for Little Earth Project and uh, um, basically kept pretty much the same kit, just bought lots of barrels. So yep. um, yeah, it was all about just trying to, trying to keep things simple and trying to keep costs down to, to a minimum. Tell me, what, what are, like, I couldn't point at something and go, well, that's that. So I'm that's assuming- the match yeah. That's the only one that's on. <laughs> That's that a copper. Kettle? Yeah. Right. Um, and they're basically two fermenters. So they're all pretty much the same vessel. They're just uh, they're just old cellar tanks that used to be down in the in the cellars of places like Butlins and right. working men's clubs and they've just been reconditioned into little brewing kit kits. Amazing. Um, I think um, they're basically the similar sort of kits that the old Firkin pubs used to, oh, yeah. used yeah. to use. This isn't actually one. I think this was built after they were They'd kind of after they had their they'd, time, they'd had their time. Bits, bits and pieces of it might have come from old, an old Firkin pub. So you actually know yeah. where these no, bits they, they have were, really come from. It was built, as I say, like a fair few years ago. Yeah. Um, so yeah, um, but it, it kind of does what we need to to do. We produce wort and put it into barrels and ferment it with interesting yeast. So yeah. And what are all these raspberries for? Um, they're actually going in two different beers. So we've got a barley wine that um, we're going to do as a kind of a, a raspberry and green hop uh, barley wine. Um, so yeah, about half of these will be going there and half of them will be going actually in this, uh, this big beer, old boy, yeah. Which has got some, it's got some sour beer in that, um, we actually had a, a coconut sour in there before uh -huh. and we emptied it and refilled it on the same day. Um, so it's still going to so have a little still touch of the, Yeah, there's actually the, the, the nib still in there. Oh, right. So, right. so yeah, it was, nib. just went straight straight in there. Um, so, yeah, we'll probably add a few more of them and add some raspberries and possibly some wild mint as well. So I have kind of wow. a, a slightly kind of chocolatey raspberry mint sour beer, which would be interesting. Sounds <laughs> kind of amazing. It's um, like, sounds like a pastry style, but done. Yeah. Done by a wild brewery. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
There may only be two full-time employees at the brewery, but there's a legion of barrels that do all the real work, and Tom hopes to get many more to ramp up his ability to blend. All these barrels have been, uh, yeah, they've been all used more than once now, so we're Great. kind of reusing, reusing the barrels. Uh, come from various different places. Lots of them are old Rioja casks, and one of the top ones up there is an old uh, French Chardonnay cask. Um, As you, if you're reusing them, do they all slowly lose that original character? Or? Yeah. Um, so, particularly with the Rioja casks, they can have quite a strong kind of red wine yeah. flavour when you first use them. So sometimes we'll kind of rinse them out more than we normally would do if we don't really want that character in it um, to begin with. Um, but but it tends to work with sour beers, kind of tannins and, you know, that's... With, with sour beer, you're kind of working with sourness and tannins rather than bitterness and sweetness mm -hmm. like a, like you would a normal beer. Um, so that works with with wine. It's kind of more along the, the lines of wine than a kind of traditional beer. Yeah, definitely. Um, and is there, is there sort of a benefit to reusing your barrels? Does it create sort of consistency across them all? Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's a right smile there, I'll tell you that. Um, kind of tend to find barrels that work really well and tend to find some that aren't so good. Yeah. Um, but then they kind of evolve and change as well, um, which is interesting. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you, but it's you kind start of, to think you know what you're going to get and then, yeah. oh, that barrel's taken a turn. But, but we, we, we're kind of starting to do quite a bit more blending than we did when we first started. So we Great. can kind of blend some of those flavours flavors out. Um, and yeah, or some, increase as well. I or guess, increase, something's yeah. Something's tasting yeah. really lovely with more acetic or, or yeah, more lactose exactly. or whatever. Yeah, exactly. So um, that's what we're looking at, at doing more of, kind of, you, you can build complexity if you're, if you're kind of blending lots mm. of barrels together. And the more barrels um, you get, I guess, the easier that, yeah. that gets, yeah. Um, so kind of our future plans are to build a little barrel store around the back where we can put a few hundred barrels. The building itself, kind of for a brewery like us, that likes to use lots of local ingredients and uh, kind of um, wants to do things a bit more kind of more naturally than a, than, um, kind of a more so conventional a brewery. brewery yeah. um, the building is kind of, kind of fits that because um, uh, it was built as kind of a, a, a low embodied energy building. So it's got lime foundations, lime plaster upstairs, um, uh, lots of the wood um, to the main kind of beams in the building come from local woodland, um, sheep's wool insulated. Um, wow, so even the building yeah. itself sort of feeds into that farmhouse yeah. idea of everything coming yeah. from the local area. Yeah. And um, I guess it's more already imbued with or happily absorbing the different microbes and stuff that you yeah i'd imagine I'm, it is yeah. It yeah um and yeah and that's kind of what we want to with, with our barrel store that we're, we're planning to build we're um we're hoping to do something similar there right. as well so using so local woods use and... local wood and have kind of a, a, a cool ship up in the rafters with kind of a open kind of local wood um uh beams and rafters up there so yeah um yeah, that would be the that's the that's the idea, and that's kind of was the idea behind behind this building when it was when it was built. Um, yeah, we just tried to use as much local local stuff as possible. So the bricks are uh, made just down the road, and right. um, we've used lots of reclaimed. Yeah, where bricks. are your hexagonal tiles at, man? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's probably not the best floor for a brewery. Uh, <laughs> Tom has lots of expansion plans for the brewery, having found a surprisingly large market for his beer, even among the locals. A major part of that plan is the field they own, where they have been growing organic hops and barley, but also hope to grow lots of organic fruits further down the line. Before that though, we had to swing by his local farmer to drop off his recently spent grain, and that turned out to be more of an adventure than we expected. Wednesday. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> when we're out, uh, we're in the back of the lab <laughs> <laughs> I think we killed the goat. <laughs> it was a goat. It was there. So, dogs look up to you, cats look down at you, pigs look you right in the eye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make yeah. good spot. <laughs> yes! <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> this is the best thing that's ever happened. Uh, yeah, so uh, back to that field. So this is your very organic field? Yeah, so this is where we grow our hops and our barley. Yep. Um, these are our little hop trellises. Um, they're not quite as tall as probably they should be, just because we did it all by hand, so they're about six feet high. You didn't fancy wobbling on some really tall ladders? On stilts. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, so it's, yeah, they're fairly easy to harvest as well. Um, yeah, that's true, of course, yeah, you can do it all by hand. And so they're just starting to cone up. Yeah. You've got these little sort of furry versions of hops. So yeah, by the second week in September, they'll be probably ready to ready to pick. Right. Uh, so they, so in a month's time, these are going to look like they'll look like proper hops. Proper hops. Yeah. Amazing. Um, and how, so, how 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 many hops do you get from here, and of what varieties? Uh, we have two hundred plants. Yep. We've actually got slightly less than two hundred plants now because some of them have uh, have, uh, <laughs> have died. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we normally get. Um, somewhere between uh, 50 and 100 kilos of, of these plants um, wet um, yep. obviously quite a lot less when by the time they've been dried yeah um, but you are using them so you dry some and age them and the others you use wet yeah so we try and use as uh, as many as much as we can wet um, just because we haven't got the facilities to dry them properly so right. um, if we use them wet and fresh, we get the most flavour out of them. Yep. Um, so some of them will dry and some of them will age. Um, we've got some in the brewery from 2014 still. Okay. So they're, uh, they're turning into kind of proper aged hops that we can use. Yeah, for some, like they use in Lambic. Just like they the use like in Lambic. Antiseptic yeah. stuff, yeah. Um, so hey. yeah, they, they lose their kind of original aromatics and get kind of an almost... Uh, Kind of cheesy flavour to them, yep. which uh, you wouldn't want to use in a in a fresh <laughs> in a clean beer. beer no. Yeah, and so so you, obviously you've got like uh, Goldings, Fuggles, Bramling Cross. Have you got other other varieties, other British ones? Um, yeah, so we've got uh, North Down and Pilot and uh, Bodicea. Um, and a few other varieties. We've actually got eight <laughs> varieties in total, and right. I always have to try and remember them all. But, um, but what? I mean, what sort of flavours are you getting from them when you use them um, wet? They're um, they're actually quite intense flavours you get when they're when they're fresh like that. Um, so pilot we like because you get kind of a lemony, fresh lemony flavour from it. Um, yep. Bramling Cross is kind of the classic flavour you get from Bramling Cross. So kind of a slight slight blackberry, yeah. dark fruit flavour. Um, and uh, um, first gold is really good, um, kind of really floral, really aromatic, and yeah, really good to use use yeah. green. So you've got the organic, is it the organic saison, organic harvest? harvest yeah, yeah. But that's your classic, like yeah, that's something we beer. do every every year, and we add wet. We use wet hops for bittering. We use wet wet, wet hops for aroma, and then we dry hop with green hops dry in, hop in the hops. in the barrel <laughs> yeah dry hop with wet hop yeah um so yeah this start, this year we're planning to do a few other interesting things as well so we've kind of got a a, a, a lower um alcohol saison which we're gonna which we're gonna put in stainless and then uh put green hops in, mm -hmm. in straight into the, into the stainless tank and then keg it fairly fresh and early and have a nice kind of green hop amazing sessionable farmhouse ale Awesome. And you've also got round here, well, sort of through these hops, a bunch of, of barley. Yep, we've got some, some barley there. It's, uh, uh, again, organic, so don't use any fertilizers or chemicals. And as you can see, it's that has quite an a effect. Few, there's quite a few weeds there this yeah. year. Um, we're, not, we're not farmers, so we get a local farmer to do the farming part for us, basically. Um, so in the future we we're looking to use this field um more for growing fruit maybe growing more hops on it um and doing some more interesting interesting stuff yeah um and getting your barley from local but elsewhere yeah so we've got a local farmer that um has got his uh, kind of a large organic farm um and he does the right things and kind of we know what he does know where he is and uh 
yeah, we think that we would probably be able to get him to to grow us our exact needs for every year, which yeah. would be would be great because obviously some years we don't grow barley on here. We have to rotate it and let the ground recover. So it's a bit of a juggling act, getting the right amount of barley and making yeah. sure the quality's quality's right. Where you need it to be, yeah. As Tom implies, there are of course huge challenges to running a brewery like this, but we were super envious of the way that he lives and the connections he's made both with the environment, the pub locals and the farmers that take his grain. We see the benefits too, as little earth produced beer that connects us to our beautiful countryside and history, a welcome and surprisingly refreshing change to the ultra modern styles that we spend most of our lives drinking. <laughs> 